Brace yourself as we untangle the high-stake war between Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun. This gripping tale shook the music industry to its core. But one thing is for sure, Taylor exposed the music industry for being a dark, twisted place. The story started in 2005 when Taylor was only 14 years old. After getting rejected by multiple labels in Tennessee, her last resort was performing in a young artist's showcase at a cafe in downtown Nashville. Luckily, music executive Scott Borchetta spotted Taylor at the show and signed her. But Scott didn't even work for a record label. Instead, he was starting his own and called it Big Machine Label Group. Taylor signed a 13-year deal that would keep her with Scott until she was 27 years old. Taylor's dad became an investor in the label, and from 2006 to 2017, she released six studio albums, including Speak Now, Red, and 1989. But behind the scenes, something sinister was happening. Although Taylor became one of the most successful selling artists in music history, Big Machine owned the masters to all of her albums. This meant Taylor's music never belonged to her, and Big Machine controlled everything. But in 2018, Taylor's contract was up, and she wanted to change it up. Taylor's lawyer suggested Big Machine sell her her albums back so she had full control over them. This way, if a commercial or movie wanted to use one of her songs, she could authorize it herself and earn a cut. But Big Machine said they would only sell Taylor her records under one condition. They said they would sell them back only if she made even more albums with them. Big Machine would only hand over one album for every new album Taylor made. But to Taylor, this wasn't a fair deal. So she parted ways with Big Machine forever. But the war was just getting started. In November 2018, Taylor signed with a different label, Republic Records. She joined clients like Ariana Grande, Drake, and The Weeknd. Under her new contract, Taylor fully owned every album she released. But while things looked up for Taylor and her new label, little did she know one of her mortal enemies was plotting something against her. Music executive Scooter Braun bought Big Machine Label Group for $330 million and became the owner of all of Taylor's music. But Scooter represented artists like Kanye West, Justin Bieber, and Ariana Grande. Surely he would take good care of Taylor's music, right? Wrong! Taylor actually hated Scooter and feared his power. She said he used his clients like Kanye to bully her and destroy her career. But Scooter didn't care because he had full ownership over Taylor's six albums and could do whatever he wanted with them. But after the label announced Scooter's purchase, Taylor went to Tumblr and spilled some insane drama. She said she felt betrayed because she tried to buy her records years ago, but Big Machine wouldn't budge. She was also furious that someone like Scooter would benefit from her music for years to come. But what Taylor said next shocked everyone involved. She went into detail why she hated Scooter, and the stories were shocking. She referenced Scooter's involvement in creating revenge content against her in Kanye West's music video, Famous. She also said Scooter encouraged Kim Kardashian to release an illegally recorded phone call between her and Kanye. But then Scooter used his immense power again and told Taylor she couldn't perform live anymore. In 2019, Taylor revealed Scooter said she couldn't play any of her old songs at the 2019 American Music Awards. Scooter also said she wasn't allowed to use them in her upcoming Netflix documentary. Miss Americana. But Scooter said he would let Taylor use her songs under one condition. The order was for Taylor to never re-record her songs, and she had to stop talking badly about him. Scooter was so nervous how all the negative press about him would affect his career and tried to put an end to it by threatening Taylor. Taylor said she just wanted to perform her own music, so she had to come up with a plan to get it back. But in reality, she was being held captive. Scooter was the prison guard, and Taylor had a life sentence. The message to Taylor was very clear. Either be a good little girl and shut up, or you'll be punished. Taylor took her chances and relied on one very specific detail in her old Big Machine contract. Because she was labeled as the songwriter for all of her songs, she could legally re-record and distribute them to the public again. And that's exactly what she did. But in October 2020, a few months before Taylor would re-release her first album, Scooter did something even crazier. He sold Big Machine to Shamrock Holdings, a private equity firm owned by Disney. But you won't believe how much he sold it for. Scooter sold Taylor's masters for $405 million, which made his company $265 million. Scooter also made a hefty profit so he could pay off his vacations 
friends with Jeff Bezos in France, but you won't believe how much he made himself. Scooter netted close to $400 million, but then Taylor revealed Scooter came to her privately and tried to make a shady deal again. She said Scooter would let her buy her masters back if she signed an NDA to only speak positively about him to the press. Before she could even bid on her own music, she would have to sign up to be silent forever. Taylor's team said the NDA wasn't normal, and Scooter wouldn't even quote her a price for her songs. But you won't believe what Scooter just said about the whole ordeal. He claimed Taylor was lying about the whole thing, and she refused to buy the masters in the first place. But then something insane happened when she started re-recording. Since 2018, Taylor has re-recorded three albums, and each was marked with the phrase, Taylor's version. This allowed Taylor's fans to actively support her new albums and give her even more money. Taylor still has more albums to re-record, including the critically acclaimed 1989. But 70% of the $92 million Taylor made in 2022 came from her re-recordings, which helped her become the most successful musician of all time. The feud died down for a while, but then in 2022, Scooter reignited it by doing an exclusive interview. Scooter said he had one regret about the whole situation, and you won't believe what it was. He said he wrongly assumed that every artist at Big Machine, including Taylor, would be happy about his purchase of the company. He thought everyone would see his intent and character and want to work with him but not Taylor. He said the situation was made even worse because he was under an insane NDA. According to Scooter, Big Machine said he couldn't tell any of the artists about his purchase until the payment went through. In the end, Scooter felt he was treated unfairly by Taylor and didn't like how it went down. But Scooter said it was a learning experience and wished everyone involved including Taylor, well. But in 2022, Business Insider did an exclusive investigation on Taylor's feud with Scooter and they found something no one knew about. The reporter said Taylor disliked how Scooter handled Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez's breakup. Selena was one of Taylor's best friends and she thought Scooter acted out of line multiple times. Reports said Scooter was intertwined in every aspect of Justin's life when he was with Selena and heavily involved himself in breaking Selena's heart. The reporter also uncovered Scooter owned and operated multiple news and blog sites, which he used to push negative press about celebrities. But Scooter's lawyers said the Business Insider reporter was spreading rumors and was biased because the writer had close ties to Taylor. Either way, Taylor has put the beef behind her and hasn't looked back. Her era's tour made her over $500 million, and she's outperformed all of Scooter's clients like Bieber and Ariana. This ate Scooter alive, and Taylor is loving every second of it. After someone tried to bury her, Taylor made half a billion dollars playing her old tracks night after night. Whether Scooter had bad intentions or not, it's easy to say Taylor came out victorious and tore up everybody who came in her way. But Scooter, on the other hand, has had a rough few years. Although he sold his holding company for close to $1 billion and was named Variety's Music Mogul of the Year in 2021, his personal life has fallen apart. In 2018, Ariana Grande, one of Scooter's biggest clients, fired him as her manager. Scooter had again stepped out of line and managed Ariana's personal life instead of her music career. But Scooter blamed his firing on something else. He said it was Pete Davidson's fault because Pete was Ariana's last boyfriend. Scooter also unfortunately filed for divorce from his wife Yael Cohen in 2021. He kept his $65 million house and private jet, while his ex-wife got the family's other $30 million house and $20 million in cash. Scooter still manages top clients like Justin Bieber, The Kid Leroy, and J Balvin, but he'll never be the same after his downward spiral with Taylor and her refusal to let him control her.